Welcome to Shader Graph Markdown. In this video I'm going to show you how you get Shader Graph Markdown into your project and how you use it for first couple simple shaders. So once we have this in our project, we can take a look at the existing materials and shaders and see if we can improve something here. So this guy, for example, uses a tune shader. And if we click on edit here, we get the shader graph for this, which is relatively simple. There's a couple settings for lighting, there's a couple of settings for alpha clipping and so on. And a number of properties in the shader graph here in the blackboard. And these properties are reflected in the material so that you can edit all of them at the same time. And if we compare this with, for example, the universal render pipeline lit shader, uh, we see there's a there's a big difference, which is that all the textures are rendered like small previews here. Everything is much more compact and easier to work with for an artist. And things are sorted a bit into different categories which also makes it easier to find your way around. So let's switch back to this shader here and introduce some of these features here in that material because with Shader Graph Markdown, this is exactly what you can do. You use shader properties to adjust how such a material looks. To get started, we first have to add Shader Graph Markdown to your shader. So we go into the graph inspector here, to the graph settings, and there's a field for custom editor GUI here. And we are going to enter needle.markdown shader GUI here. And once we save that, so after adding this, we can already see some changes here. The additional options move to the bottom and there's a new debug section. So now that our shader uses shader graph markdown, we can go ahead and create a couple of dummy properties to control how everything is drawn. So first off, we click on plus here and add a float property that we're going to call color options. And we're adding a hash in front of that because the hash specifies that this is a fold out in Shader Graph Markdown. And now when we move this to the top and save, we already get a drop down here uh, with our new color options. I'm going to close this one so we have a bit more space here. So here we have our color options drop down. And we can add a second folder here for a mission and move that a little bit to the top. And with this, we have already separated our color from our emission here. So next thing we can do is we can show this big texture previews in a more compact form. And to do that, we can just select our texture here and add an ampersand at the end of this. And this is what Shader Graph Markdown uses throughout the board for inlining a property and inlining meaning render it as compact as possible in your material. If we save this now, we get a small texture preview here. So next thing we're going to do is we want this color to live right next to that because this is something that the, the universal lit material and others also do to save on space. To do so, we can just move this color up and add a second ampersand here. And the second ampersand is used as, please pull in the next property and draw it in the same line. And if we save this, we now get color texture here and the color property right next to that. And we can do the same with our specular map. We just move it up add two ampersands here. And that's it. Now we already have our texture slot and the color right next to it. So and we can do the same with our emission down here. So we inline our emission map with the emission property here. Another thing that looks a bit weird here is the tiling and offset. So this is something you find often in shaders because you want to specify how your texture is spread across the surface. And these are both vector twos here, but Unity shows them as vector fours, which can be pretty confusing. And if we take another look at the URP lit shader, what it does is it renders this as a nice block, as a single block essentially here, that has just two values for both tiling and offset. And we can do the same here. And what we do is, 
instead of using tiling and offset as this, we're introducing a new property which is a vector 4 and which is tiling and offset. And on this one, we're going to name it tiling offset. And we make sure that the defaults are the same, which is like the tiling is 1 and the offset 0. And now that we did this, for now we only have a vector 4 here. But we can do the same thing as before here. We can inline this and tell it, hey, please make something out of this. This looks a bit nicer. And immediately we get this block here with tiling and offset as nice two lines. So we can get rid of these others here. And of course, we need to make sure that we reconnect this. So we're splitting this up. And then say, this is actually the tiling. And this is actually the offset here. And let's add that to this group. There we go. Save. Look at how much space we saved. So this is the same material as before, but now much more readable and much more extendable. Because what before felt like a full page of settings here is now just a couple of lines. And of course, we could also say for this simple one here, we don't really need those foldouts. We instead want to bring all these three textures together, move our tiling and offset down, and have a super compact representation here of all the settings that our shader has. Thanks for watching.